Thank you for staying with me on Crunch Econometrics, still on the Eteru Elasticity series. In this video, we will consider ways of detecting the problem of Eteru Elasticity. In the previous video, we understood the nature, causes, and consequences of the problem. Now, in this video, we are going to take a look at informal and formal ways by which we can detect the problem of Eteru Elasticity in any model. The truth is that there is no hard and fast rule for detecting the problem. Therefore, more often than not, heteroscedasticity may be a case of educated guesswork, your previous empirical experiences or by mere speculation. However, there are informal and formal approaches by which the problem can be detected. The informal approach is by plotting the residuals from the regression against the estimated dependent variable, while the formal is by performing various econometric tests. There are several tests of heteroscedasticity, each having its own assumptions. Any interested reader, you may want to consider or consult the various references that I've listed at the end of this video. If you are ready, load your data, and if you want to use mine, I'll be using the Aceran Hall HPRIZE data I have the link to that file in the video description. Click on it and it will take you to my website where you can download it free of charge. This is what we tend to do by informal detection. We are going to look at the plot of the squared residuals against the predicted value of the dependent variable from this particular model. We have price, the dependent variable, and rooms, square feet as the two regressors. Another thing we are going to consider is to plot each regressor against the fitted value of the dependent variable, that is, using a scatter plot, so that we can know which of them drives heteroscedasticity. From the data editor, these are the variables, price, rooms, and square feet. I have the codes already written out in the do file. So the first thing to do is to plot the residual and the fitted values of the model. So, we click on this and we execute this command, the regress command. So here we have the result. I won't be interpreting this because that is not the essence of this tutorial. We just want to show whether this model is heteroscedastic or not. So this is the outcome of the regression. So the next thing to do is to plot the residuals against the fitted value using the RVF plot command in Stata. I highlight this and execute. So we can see the plot of the residuals against the fitted values. We can see. So this pattern shows that this model is clearly heteroscedastic. You can also execute the RVF plot where you now have the fitted line. So let's execute this. Similar to what was done before, now it has a fitted line at zero. So clearly, this model is heteroscedastic. So next, we compare the scatter plot of price against each regressor with a fitted value to know which regressor drives heteroscedasticity. So I have the code written out, which is for price and rooms. I execute this. So we can see a very strong evidence of heteroscedasticity. We do the same thing for price and square feet, plotting it for visualization. I execute this. So here we have a weaker evidence of heteroscedasticity, but notwithstanding, it is present in this model. Now we are going to consider formal detection of heteroscedasticity. On the screen, I have a generalized form of multivariate linear models. Equation one, is for a cross-sectional model indicated by subscript i. Equation 1a is for a time series model indicated by subscript t. And equation 1b is a panel data model indicated by subscript it. And we can see here the variance of the error term we can see indicated by subscript i indicates heteroscedasticity. So remember I said, once you see a subscript, it shows that the variance in that model is not constant. Same thing for equation 1b, we can see the construct of the variance here, 
shows that it changes over time. And same thing for panel, the variance also changes across the entire sample. So these are the various ways by which you can construct different multivariate linear models depending on the, the structure of your data. So I'm going to stick to using equation one, a cross-sectional analysis. So now let's consider some heteroscedasticity test. There are so many of them out there, I have only considered just seven for this tutorial. Bruce Pagan, Glesa, Havigovi, Park Elem, Concabasset, Gophiquant, and White. Each of them have their own auxiliary equation. And how do you get to this auxiliary equation? From equation one, which is the multivariate cross-sectional model. Once you're able to execute this, you extract the residual. For Bruce Pagan, the residual is squared and regressed on the regressors. For Glesser, you use the absolute value of the residual and regress it on the independent variables. For Havegovi, you use the log of the squared residuals and regress it on the independent variables. For PAC-LM, you use the log of the squared residuals and regress on the log of the independent variables. For concabasset, you use the squared residuals and regress on the predicted value, that is the squared predicted value of the dependent variable. Gofe quant is a bit different. It's mostly applicable for cross-sections, but not suitable for multivariate models. It's only for univariate models because you have to divide the sample into two. So I won't be covering Gofe quant in this series. So next we move to white. For white, you use the squared residuals and you regress it on the independent variables, the squared independent variables, and their cross terms. So this is for white test. So depending on the test you want to deploy, you execute your auxiliary equation, and the next thing you have to do is to formulate your hypothesis. And what will be your null hypothesis? is that the coefficients from the auxiliary regression are all equal to zero. Against the alternative that at least one of the coefficients is different from zero and that at least one of the regressors affects the variance of the residuals. Let me take you back to the table. So this is what you are testing, the deltas, the slope coefficients, you are testing that they are equal to zero, that is, they are homoscedastic. Against the alternative, that at least one of the regressors drive heteroscedasticity. So these are the deltas you are testing. And what would be your decision criteria? You can use two, either the LM or the p-value. For the LM, you multiply the number of observations by the R squared from the auxiliary regression. If the statistic is higher than the chi-square statistic, then you reject the null and conclude that there is significant evidence of heteroscedasticity. And if you are using the p-value, once the p-value is lower than 0.05, you reject the null and also conclude that there is significant evidence of heteroscedasticity. So let's take a look at the process of engaging the Bruch pagan LM test. Let's see how far we can derive um, the LM statistic and the um, chi-square statistic. So this is step one, obtain the residuals from the regression, which is the regression. Next, estimate the auxiliary regression, formulate the hypothesis. Step four, compute either the LM statistic as given by this equation or the F statistic. And given that the LM statistic is quite easier to compute, so we will go with the LM statistic. Same decision criteria. Once the LM statistic is higher than the chi-square statistic, we we'll reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. Or if the p-value 
is lower than 0.05 will reveal the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. Still using our price, rooms, and square feet data, we now want to test for heteroscedasticity. This is all you have to do. You regress price on the two independent variables, you extract the residual, you generate the square of the residual, and you regress the squared residual on the dependent variable, and you execute the e start e test command. So let's do that. I highlight all this and execute them. So let me take you through what I just did. These are the results. This is for the initial regression of price on rooms and square feet. Initial regression. Like I said, I'm not discussing this because our aim is to detect heteroscedasticity. The next thing, with the predict command, I extracted the residual. With the generate command, I obtained the square of the residual. And the next thing I did is to regress the residual on the independent variables. So what you have here is the outcome of the auxiliary regression. By invoking the instant ETS command, I have the Bruch Pagan result here. The chi square is 47.77 with a p-value significant at 1%. So this one clearly tells us that the model is heteroscedastic. So this is a formal way of detecting heteroscedasticity in a model. So that concludes our video on how you can detect heteroscedasticity. I will encourage you to please go through one or two references here. I have so many of them from the textbooks I used to prepare this series to various references on the different heteroscedasticity tests for you to know their various underlying assumptions. So we have covered how to detect heteroscedasticity using either formal approach or informal approach. The next video will be to show you how you can resolve or correct for heteroscedasticity using functional form with least squares or the white robot standard errors text. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting my channel. I appreciate my viewers, my subscribers, and as many who are sharing my link. Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to teaching beginners and intermediate level users. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with the videos on how you can correct heteroscedasticity.